Why are you wearing that life jacket? It's ridiculous. Just learn to swim. I'm not going to learn to swim. What, at this age, with, with these heavy bones, you know what they say about black people? We can't swim. We just drown. Hi, my name is Ed Akira, and I'm the producer of a short film documentary, a film called Blacks Can't Swim. The aim of the film is to understand why a disproportionate amount of black people and ethnic minorities can't and don't swim. Today I have the pleasure of speaking with one of Britain's top female marathon swimmers who happens to be the only black swimmer on Team GB, Alice Dion. Thank you for joining us at the London Royal Docks. Yeah, thanks for having me. The amazing open water swimming location, courtesy <laughs> of um, Nauka. So, um, tell me, how does it feel currently being the only black swimmer in Team GMB? Um, tough one, because I'm like, I'm obviously proud of my achievements. Mm -hmm. Very proud of my achievements of making Team GB and like being a part of that. And change is coming. Like I can feel it. I can, I've seen it around at like open meets and stuff. There's there's um, a lot of younger kids coming through who are from ethnic minorities. Yeah. There's a lot more of them just in swimming in general. So, like, I may be the only one on the team now, but I reckon in about five years, probably, we'll see another and then another, and it'll just be like a domino effect now, hopefully. Like, I, I don't want to be the only one. Like, a, I yeah, I don't want to be the only one. <laughs> Can be lonely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's progress, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because a lot more people are... Saying, and, and that's why we need role models yeah. to encourage the younger generation Definitely, to yeah. start getting involved in the swimming, swimming activities. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at what age did you first learn to swim and what prompted you to take it up professionally? Um, I first learned to swim at about six, I think, maybe five or six, I think. And um, it was just at the local swimming pool around where I live. And then um, my mum saw, like, at that pool, she saw the club notice board for the for the local swimming club and was like oh I'll just put you in for the local swimming club sessions like you'll do like two two or three of them a week you and you and your brother because just because you're getting bored at home and I, I, but I want you to get out of the house and go do something you might as well you enjoy swimming and then like I just and we both enjoyed it loads progressed to the, a bigger club then a bigger club and then I, I got a scholarship at school so I was able to swim and like study and then went down to university did the same swim and study and um, yeah, just progressed from there. Like, I happened to make a Team GB team at 16 for a junior team, and then at 17, I made my first senior team, and then it's just kept like snowballing, really. Yeah, really. But, but you must have heard this question a number of times. Why long distance? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get asked that a lot. Yeah, um, I was just always good at like long distance freestyle in the pool, mm. like. Um, and then I got given the chance to do open water swimming, got given the chance to do a marathon swim and gave it a shot, managed to finish the race. And then they're like, oh, we'll, we'll take you along to like um, European juniors. And then I went on to win European juniors and it just like all took off from there, really. Like they were like, oh, you're obviously good at open water. Like, why don't you keep doing it? So yeah. I was like, yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> as, as you know from a um, film called Black Can Swim, yeah. I'm only le now learning how to swim. Yeah, yeah. And uh, even in the pool is a bit of a, a chore. So, <laughs> So to see what you do on the, on, uh, in it's the open water like is like, yeah. wow, I don't know how you do it. Um, excuse me if I'm asking a very naive question. <laughs> is the, what about germs and things yeah. like that? <laughs> well, yeah, um, I, I don't, you can't swim in like every bit of open water. I mean, yeah. you can swim in it, yeah. but um, a, yeah, there might be like health issues related to it. Um, often, normally it's completely fine to swim in, just be safe, mm. make sure you know what you're doing. If, you, if you're planning on doing that, yeah. make sure you like, look up if it's okay to swim there for a start yeah. um yeah it's it can get there's fish and sometimes there's seaweed um little lice that bite you i've had jellyfish before but yeah you're, you're, you're not selling it to me alice you're not selling it <laughs> it's not as bad as it sounds so. so as a black competitive swimmer what's the biggest challenge um you have come up against um i think I think two challenges. One of them, I say my hair probably. It's, it's difficult to manage sometimes. It can be difficult. Like I was always very fortunate. I had my mum who did my hair for me like all the time um, when I was like growing up for swimming and stuff. She always had it prepared for me, like so I could swim. 
but then um, went to uni. Obviously, my mum's not my mum's not on hand. I'm at university. Um, can't afford to like go back home and like have her like plaiting my hair every week. So I kind of was like, okay, I'll, I'll learn to do it myself now. And um, I'd always relaxed it, but then eventually I just stopped relaxing it. About um, two years ago, I stopped, and then decided to have the big chop, which is get rid of all the relaxed hair and go natural. So I've got my like natural hair now, and um, it can get challenging at sometimes. I've learned to manage it now, like. I just have to make sure it's ready and just plait it and make sure I know what I'm doing every day with it, but it's not that bad. And then, um, so the other challenge would be um, the fact that I am the only black swimmer. I don't want to like um, make myself like a victim of that, if that makes sense. I don't want to see myself as, oh, I'm the only black swimmer, poor me. Like, yeah. I'm not I'm not a victim in this. Like, um, I, may, I may be a minority, but that, I don't think that matters. Like, um, I'm just trying to, I'm mean, trying to use my voice now to like encourage more people to swim and stuff and like more people from every race, every like background, like just come along and tr try swimming, especially, like, I know it's harder for black people, they, it's the whole stereotype thing behind it, but yeah, and uh, yeah. <laughs> There's a reason why we're working on the Blacks Can, can swim, swim campaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Definitely. Every time I went on holiday, it would be, I have to come back, have a treatment at the hairdressers, next week have another treatment just to get it back to normal. It's like, it ruins our hair so much more. You spoke about this in one of your recent BBC um, interviews yeah. and the subject was touched on in the film called Black Can Swim as well. Mm -hmm. Is it a real issue with black women swimming because of their hair? It is. It, yeah, it, it is. Um, I know a lot of people don't understand this and I get why you don't understand it because it's, it's like, come on, it's hair, like it'll dry, it'll go back to how it was, you'll get over it. But um, it's just, it's hard. It's another factor that you have to think about when getting in the pool. Like, um, it's, swimming's like kind of difficult as enough as it, as it is as a sport, but also like how it works, if you know what I mean? Like you have to like get in to like chlorinated water, get, um, get wet, you have to get out and dry yourself, have a shower, like, and then on top of it, your hair is like, it goes dry. It goes, um, it's just, it does, it's not a nice state from the chlorine can like, really ruin it. It happens to everybody's hair as well. It's not just black women. Like you see it with swimmers, they get like thinner hair. It goes kind of dead because the chlorine like literally kills it. But obviously for black women, hair is such a big part of their identity. And personally, it's part of my identity as well. Like a, it's just part of who you are. And obviously if that's harder to manage, to do like to do something like swimming it's going to put you off getting in the water so, yeah because yeah. um, I'm, I'm of african descent mm -hmm. so i've seen some of this elaborate hairstyles yeah. and i said and i said i was like how can they actually get into the water with this with kind of hair it, yeah. yeah and it, and it's, it's, it's costs a lot of money to maintain the hair after, and, yeah, and yeah. a lot of time so yeah. but I, I've, there's a lot of um there's a company called i think it's called swim scarf yes. and they've got this uh, they've got this um the swimming cap for yeah. you know afro hairs and that kind of thing which is great yeah, so, yeah. so i don't I, think there's any excuse no no not, yeah not to swim now isn't <laughs> no, it no yeah, yeah. Um, and there's a lot of women out there doing stuff like that and yeah swim scarf um she sent me one it is very good yeah. um keeps your hair dry it's, it's huge as well you can get so much hair in there yeah. and um it's it's a good opportunity for black women to yeah. finally explore swimming yeah just give it a give it a shot yeah there's, there's less limitations now good yeah, You need representation to increase participation. Yeah. So, um, in, like, I know when I, when I was younger, it was always, um, I was quite surprised when I heard that, like, black people aren't meant to swim or, like, don't swim. I like it, I never really, like, I never really understood it. I was like, well, why can't they? Like, it's it's just, it's water. Like, mm. we, we, we humans can swim. Like, yeah. they're meant to, they're meant to be able to swim, so. I've, yeah, I've heard people say like, oh, when you go to a pool party with black people there, you'll, yeah. there's none of them in the pool and yeah. stuff like that. And like, it's, um, I don't know, like, I suppose it's all like personal service, just like, oh, we don't swim, like the chlorine like makes our skin ashy, does, it does, it dries your skin out, ruins your hair, like we just said, yeah. and, um, and like the whole like stereotype behind black people not yeah. swimming and stuff as well. That stereotype is just, oh, it just needs to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think, I think we're, we're, this is the beginning. I personally think this is the beginning of the end of the stereotype, so. stigmas and yeah, the myths. Yeah, yeah. Racism is alive and well 
in sports mm. and the rest is ugly head in many many forms yeah have you experienced or witnessed any form of racism in your swimming career i've had one incident which i'm very grateful it's only one incident to be fair because i've been in swimming a long time and for something that's seen as like a white sport or a non-black sport i'm very fortunate i've only had one incident but it was um i was about 17 and a coach said to another swimmer they called me a skinny n-word <laughs> and um the swimmer told me and i was i didn't even know this coach i didn't know him at all he was from a completely different club the swimmer told me and i was like okay like i kind of just laughed it off didn't really know how to react to it i've never ex i never experienced anything like that and i didn't think i didn't think it was like possible if that makes sense like um just kind of moved on from it i never dwelled on it at all okay, i just so let it let it wash over me like they just they said something disgusting uh, it's a reflection of them not a reflection of me <laughs> that's, that's very good so learning to swim can be very, a very daunting experience and hence maybe the reason why a lot of people who didn't learn to swim at an early age mm -hmm. don't and I, i've used myself as, a, as an example i'm only learning how to swim now and um it ain't easy but it's very very good and it's very very refreshing and thanks to people like um, my swimming instructor yeah. uh, maltrude and swimming nature who've managed to help me get rid of the fear i can actually now get into the water and, good. Good. and do yeah. so how can we encourage other people to, to do the same you need to find the right people to support you teaching an adult is very difficult i like um children naturally will want yeah. to learn and won't be as afraid of the water mm. But um, obviously teaching an adult is very hard and um, it's, it's about finding the right people who are going to support you and yeah. who, who will help teach you, so yeah. Hello Frank, I'm your good friend Mr. Society. Never take that life jacket off, NEVER! Have you seen the weather out there? You'll die if you take that jacket off! Keep that jacket on! Have you seen the stats? Blacks can't swim. You're too heavy boned. You don't float. You'll sink. Keep that life jacket on. Do you do you come across a lot of people in my situation? I have, yeah. Today, I actually, um, a, a woman was telling me about how she learned to swim, and she was told by an instructor that um, black people don't swim, like. Um, the, the um, large bottom like won't be able to swim and um, her ankles weren't flexible enough and that, as a black woman or something I was just I couldn't believe it and I asked what year this was in and this was in 2011 it was it wasn't even like yeah. early 90s or yeah. something it was it was like eight years ago and I, I couldn't believe hearing that story and she said she, she started to teach herself how to swim actually and it's a really really incredible story and um, yeah. The, and eventually the instructor went and saw her and saw that she was able to swim and then was like oh well you can swim then and she was just like well like why why were people telling me that I couldn't just because of like my race and I was like it's, it's bad and I can't believe there are instructors out there who will actually actively discourage black people from attempting to swim because like it's there's no science behind it there's no proof <laughs> and, 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 and that's one, and one um, on, on the soundtrack of um, a film com, called Last Can't Swim I asked if it's a cultural or physical, physical. thing mm. there has a, there, you know, there's been a lot of talk about black people having a physique which makes it very very difficult to float or yeah. swim there hasn't, like you said, there hasn't been any proof. There hasn't no. been yet. No, <laughs> it's a lie. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's, well, it has to be because there, there isn't any proof. No. Um, but a lot of people play on that, and a lot of people, because I've, I've, I've got, I've got a friend who went, who's been learning how to swim, and he was told by the instructor that because you're bigger bones, <laughs> and that's why you're probably having problems. And um, so I think we just need to hammer on and let people know that this is not yeah yeah definitely yeah, yeah. This, is, this is this is not true it's not true you know no. you just have everyone can swim Every, yeah. anyone can swim yeah okay, once you get once you um, um bypass the initial fear yeah of, of, you know, of water and yeah. obviously as you the older you are the, the, the harder it, it is, is yeah that's right yeah everyone should be able to swim yeah. are you ready for this one <laughs> the negro and learning to swim i'll say it again the negro and learning to swim the buoyancy problem related to reported biological differences. So this was a publication by the zoology department of Ohio University in, 19, in 1969. Wow. Um, 
a lot of emphasis on the department that did the research, the zoology, zoology. department. Yeah, <laughs> incredible. So, uh, I know, I know. So, um, do you think mediums such as this have a place in creating the stereotypes as we have today? Definitely. I mean, that 1969. That's that's in living memory. Yeah. That is in. A, um, that's, that's in living memory for a lot of mm. black people and I know that was in America I, I don't really know the state of blacks and swimming in Britain mm -hmm. I assume it's something quite similar mm -hmm. definitely in America the uh, the whole thing about blacks weren't even allowed to go into swimming people, pools yep. and stuff like that like um, there's that very famous picture I think of um, a hotel owner pouring acid into a swimming pool which black people are in and I think that was only in the 60s so I mean it's not that long ago it's in this is in living memory and obviously it, it's internalized it gets like it gets passed along and even if someone is in my generation doesn't realize as a black person someone in my generation they don't realize that they've had this like this kind of weight put on them this whole time through people saying things like that in that zoology the department <laughs> of zoology saying that black people like can't float or something mm. like and it gets it gets passed down and it gets like carried on like word of mouth and eventually maybe that isn't the issue anymore but it it's still there because it's been like put on them as a weight and it's it hasn't nobody's like there aren't many people trying to like get rid of that and just be like no like it's it's fine like mm. learn to swim there's there's nothing there's nothing physically stopping you yeah. from swimming so there's talks of fear of swimming being passed down in generations through genetics. In other words, we are likely to inherit the fears of our parents. Wow. Do you think there's any truth in this? Oh, I have no idea. I, I, like how, how recent is the research? <laughs> um, it's, I, I don't have the date, but they're saying that basically if we, we inherited the baggage of our parents yeah. but I can I can I can see how that will happen in, in the cell because my mum can't swim and my dad couldn't swim so her fears would automatically be passed yeah, out to me I don't yeah. know I don't know if it's genetically but, but yeah. her talking about it her, her, the way she, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Would make me apprehensive, Not yet, apprehensive of it. exactly yes. so I don't know yes. if that's what they meant yeah I I can't comment on yeah. genetically, um, like, I have yeah. no idea, but um, definitely, I mean, if, if you've got someone from a young age, uh, from you as a child, as a young age, your mum saying like, oh, don't go in the water or, or be careful of the water or something like that, just little things, little cues, you'll naturally start to pick up on that should be a fear. So, and then obviously that's so much harder to get over because, if, especially if you're learning as an adult, yeah. like I said, yeah, it's another, it's another step to like learning to be comfortable in the water. It's just, yeah. it's, it's probably maybe as hard as swimming maybe, I, I don't know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not easy. I uh, know, so, so you know what, I'm so happy I'm learning how to swim now and I, I can't swim yeah. a bit because Good for you. When, when I go on holidays, I, I'm not the person looking after the towels anymore, yeah. I'm, I'm looking after the bags and the towels on the beach, I, I can, uh, someone else can do that but job yeah. now. <laughs> I spent all my life doing that one now, now I'm going to be, be in that water. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, not very far, but I'll be in the water. <laughs> so, um, swimming is part is part of the educational curriculum mm -hmm. in, in schools yeah. in the UK, and each child requires to meet a minimum swimming criteria before leaving school. But this doesn't happen, does it? No, I don't think it does. <laughs> how does how was it when you were at school? I do remember doing swimming lessons. Yeah, yeah. I um I had already learnt. I think I'd already learned to swim by then because I was learning in like, it was like year two, so uh, six, are you six, six or seven? Um, I think that's when we started to do them, year two and year three. Um, but obviously that was like 15 years ago now, so it's changed quite a lot, I bet. But um, from my experience, I do remember doing them. I remember really enjoying them. Um, I can't remember, I, was the, I think I was the only black girl in my class, so, well, only black person mm. in my class. I think there was one or two in the school, mm. so I, I can't remember if anybody like skipped out on them. I can't remember anybody like missing them for any reason. Mm. Maybe they were ill or something, but yeah. not like continuously every yeah. week. I'm pretty yeah. sure everybody knew how to swim. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I was speaking to a teacher, and she said usually by the time the children, the child starts school, mm. age five, six, if they don't know how to swim already there's a big chance they'll be left behind. Yeah. So, so we're trying to encourage parents to um, get their children swimming so at a very early yeah. age. 
because as, 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 as you can imagine the school a class will have about 30 people in there yeah teacher can't can't look after it no it's so, hard yeah, yeah so if everyone else is swimming I mean, yeah and, and and what i've noticed what, I've, what she what she what she said is that she noticed that a lot of the children that can't swim is obviously black Correct. or ethnic minorities yeah so we've got a job to do yeah we, we, we have yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah yeah um another another question I, I did a um a q a on a film called black and swim at london metropolitan university and after showing the film there were questions answers not a single person could mention a single black swimmer. competitive yeah. swimmer so and that's what gave me the idea of you know highlighting the role models mm. And I and I on the soundtrack I, I highlighted about 40 45 yeah. role models and their achievements. You're yeah. obviously on there. So uh, and I think so. I think for the younger generation, you've got to see. I mean, what you, you yeah. if you see if you see it, yeah, you, you've got yeah, more chance, chance of, of wanting yeah, to do yeah, it. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Um, 2016 was a probably big one of probably the like, start point of the turning of this when Simone Manuel oh, yeah. won the hundred free at the Olympics. Huge, huge achievement and. Um, it's the first, definitely the first black woman to win, I think, an Olympic medal, I think. Definitely the first gold. And um, it's, it's I hope definitely the start, the beginning. It's the, it's the beginning of this narrative. It's the yeah. beginning of um, people changing this. And like, um, it's exciting. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it must be exciting. It's definitely <laughs> exciting for me. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm only, I'm only learning how to swim. <laughs> So looking at the swimming from a, li um, a life skill perspective, figures indicate that black children drown at the rate of 5.5 .5 times that of white children. How can we encourage black and ethnic parents to take swimming more seriously and get their children engaged at a very early age? Yeah, it's hard because um, obviously, as we said before, the um, parents, are, if your parent doesn't swim or is afraid of the water, they're naturally going to be more apprehensive about putting their child in there, just wanting to protect them. But the best thing that they could do is let them, like, get them to learn how to swim, um, get them lessons, um, maybe try and teach them yourself. You can learn together, perhaps. Um, just obviously be safe with that. Please be safe with that. Um, but uh, yeah, just. Get, try and get them in the water because they naturally all want to learn to swim at an earlier age and it will get to the point where it will get more and more difficult as they get older and the fear will get, not fear, maybe, maybe it might not even be a fear but that like apprehension of it or just dislike, and fear, yeah, it, it will grow as they get older and you, you don't want that and then um, obviously another factor which can affect um, communities um, is swimming lessons are very expensive and poor families it, it, if they've got two or three kids that need to learn how to swim, that's two or three le like that's two lots of lessons you need to pay for. It's expensive. It's not cheap. It's really not a cheap mm. skill to learn unless you have somebody who can teach you for free. Which, like swim teachers, are very can be very expensive. So, it's it's a, obviously that's another factor which can stop um, people from learning how to swim. It's like the fact it's so expensive. <laughs> so you mentioned that you represent black competitive swimmers in the UK who may often feel out of place. <laughs> yeah, what do you mean by that? Um, I just um, I, I just want to use my voice to like speak not on behalf of because I can't speak on behalf of a, a whole race or a group of people like I'm only one person but um, I just kind of want to show that like we exist, I don't know, it's quite it such a minority. I understand if people kind of, we get kind of like forgotten about, but there's a lot of black swimmers out there. There's a lot of us going with good swimmers, genuinely good swimmers, like um, to a high competitive level. And um, yeah, just um, give us a voice maybe, I don't know, like just, um, yeah, just give like a positive light on us, you know? Um, yeah, that's good, that's good, that's good. <laughs> Put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> so you competed in the Summer World Champions in South Korea. Mm -hmm. How did that go? Uh, it was good, yeah. I came um, 17th. I wasn't too far off, like, first or the top 10. Obviously, needed um, to make the Olympics then, I needed to be in the top 10. So um, that was disappointing on that aspect. But um, there's hopefully, hopefully, I'll get another chance to qualify in June. And then hopefully, if I qualify, I'll go to the Olympics and, like, 
give it give that my best shot and hopefully get a good performance there as well so like a lot of hopefullys but I'm, I'm optimistic about it and I'm looking forward to the season ahead so yeah but I know you're going to do a, I know yeah, you're going to do a great yeah, thing a great job so, yeah. and um, let, let's just let's just change the perception let's just change and yeah. the, um, let people know that it's you know the stereotypes the stigmas the yeah, myths yeah yeah let's get rid of them yeah everyone know. can swim yeah, everyone, everyone can, can swim, swim. Yeah. yeah it's for everybody it's not yeah, yeah. it's for everybody yeah. absolutely Every, everybody. yeah and and i'll say it and i'll say it again blacks can swim yes. here we are at the beginning of the end of how i know it as a generation of black and ethnic minorities not swimming for stereotypical reasons with a film called Black's Count Swim, I believe we have now released the elephant in the room. The more we talk about it, the easier it becomes. So let's confront our fears, address the stereotypes, and dispel the myths. Regardless of race, culture, or creed, swimming is a life skill that we all need to have. Hence the reason why I have now progressed from my bath into the swimming pool and if now can have anything to do with it i'll be swimming in the open water very soon <laughs> <laughs>